All right, so here they're asking us hyperconjugation is not observed in which of these, right? So your options are free radical, carbon ion, carbocation, and option D is double bond. Okay, so we need to talk about in which of these options we do not observe hyperconjugation, right? So first of all, what is hyperconjugation? Now, if you see hyperconjugation or if you see something called, one second, okay, whether you see hyperconjugation effect or if you see Baker Nathan effect, right? Or if they talk about no bond resonance, right? No bond resonance. You need to remember, you need to understand that all these three are referring to the same electronic effect. Very, very important, right? So it has happened in the past that at some places Baker Nathan effect has been used, although technically speaking, it's a little bit different, but yes. For our purposes of the competitive examinations, you can understand that Baker-Nathan effect is the same as hyperconjugation effect. Okay, so yes, this is what happens. It's also called no bond resonance. And this is an effect, this is an effect which dominates. The effect of this uh, electronic effect is seen majorly in carbocations. Yes, it is responsible for the stability of carbocations and free radicals, right? Or you can call it... Uh, radicals simply okay as well as in determining the stability of alkenes or places where you have double bonds right so these are the three places where we observe a major role played by hyperconjugation effect and what do we know we know that as the number of hyperconjugating structures increases as the number of hyperconjugating structures increases the stability of the structure increases right stability increases and what does the number of hyperconjugating structures depend on that depends on the number of alpha hydrogen so as the number of alpha hydrogen atoms increases the number of hyperconjugating structures increases and as the number of hyperconjugating structures increases the stability of the given structure increases right okay we've discussed quite a lot let's get back to the options where is it seen option a free radical yes definitely observed Option B, carbon ion. No, carbon ion is not the right answer. I mean, hyperconjugation is not, uh, you know, observed in carbon ions or it does not play a major role there. Carbocation, yes, most definitely. And then what do we have? Double bonds. So, yes. Right, so you can see there's just one place where hyperconjugation does not play a major role or it's not observed. So, option B, uh, sorry, carbon ion is going to be the right answer to this question. Here they're saying we need to find the total number of alpha hydrogens in the given structure. You can see what we have here is a polycyclic compound. And what is alpha hydrogen? Basically, the hydrogen on the alpha carbon is called the alpha hydrogen. What is the alpha carbon? Whatever is your functional group, right? So here, as you can see in the given structure, the functional group will be the double bond, right? So wherever you have the pi bond adjacent to the pi bond, you need to take the alpha carbon okay so let's say i'm talking about this pi bond here so what is adjacent to it you have this right and you have this so i'll call this one i'll call this two i'm just naming it for our convenience similarly when you look at this pi bond you have um three and you have four right now when you come to this pi bond you don't need to consider the alpha carbon with respect to it because here what happens is the alpha carbons here and here, they also have the functional group, right? So this will not be considered. Similarly, okay, so yes, this is this is what we have, okay? So you have one, two, three, and four, these four carbons, count the number of hydrogens on these four carbons and you'll have the right answer with you, okay? So let's see, here you have on carbon number one, one and two, two hydrogen atoms on carbon number two, you have one hydrogen atom. On carbon number three, you have one hydrogen atom and on carbon number four, you have two hydrogen atoms, right? So what is the total? Total we have is six hydrogen atoms, okay? So six alpha hydrogen atoms and option C, six is going to be the right answer to this question. So here they're asking us for the most stable carbocation. You have options A and B, you have options C and D, and from these you need to figure out which of the formed carbocations is going to be the most stable right now whenever it comes to carbocation stability this is something you will be using a lot a lot in the coming chapters so you need to remember that the order of stability is like this uh tertiary greater than secondary greater than primary greater than 
methyl carbocation right and how is this stability governed many people will tell you that the stability is governed by the plus m uh, sorry the plus i uh, of alkyl groups that is one way to look at it definitely but in the case of carbocations the stability is majorly governed by hyperconjugation right so hyperconjugation is the major factor that determines the stability of carbocations free radicals and alkenes okay this is something you need to remember so in the case of a tertiary carbocation what happens is the number of hyperconjugating structures becomes the most then comes secondary then comes primary and then of course methyl has no such factor okay so yes this is what happens now let's see what are the uh, given carbocations what is the nature of these carbocations so what do you have here option a you can see that here you have the plus charge which means this is a primary carbocation in case of option b you can see the plus charge is here and the carbon which has the plus charge has one two three three carbon attached so three carbons attached to it which means this is going to be a tertiary carbocation then what do you have option c so here is the plus charge and here you have one carbon at, uh, attached to the carbon that has the plus charge which means this is again a primary carbocation similarly option d you have the plus charge here you have one and two carbon atoms attached to the carbon which has the plus charge so here you have a secondary carbocation okay what did we say we said that this is the order of stability so wherever you have tertiary that is going to be the answer which means option b is going to be the right answer to this question okay so here they're asking us to choose the correct order of stability of the given alkenes you have alkenes given to you in one two and three and the answer will become something like this right you need to report which one of these is going to be more stable than the other in terms of an order okay cool so now the moment you see alkenes and you need to talk about the stability of alkenes you need to remember that stability of alkenes depends on hyperconjugation effect right it depends on hyperconjugation effect and what do we know we know that the as the number of hyperconjugating structures right just a second i will write hyperconjugating structures increases the stability increases correct the stability of the structure increases as the number of hyperconjugating structures increases correct but how do you determine the number of hyperconjugating structures the number of hyperconjugating structures increases with the number of alpha hydrogens so as the number of alpha hydrogen atoms increases the number of hyperconjugating structures increases as the number of hyperconjugating structure increases the stability of the given structure increases okay so let's see here this is the functional group that we have so with respect to this functional group we need to find out the alpha hydrogens in case one what do you have if this is the given structure then this will be the alpha hydrogen correct so here sorry that will be the alpha carbon so on this alpha carbon you have one hydrogen okay so in structure one you have one alpha hydrogen okay so i'm going to write one alpha hydrogen here now what about the second one let's see so in the second one uh, with respect to the functional group alpha carbons are here and here okay how many hydrogens do you have you have one two and here also you have one two which means you have a total of four hydrogen atoms in the second structure right so you have four alpha hydrogens in the second structure cool now what about the third one let's see so in the case of the third one this is the functional group so alpha carbons will be here here and here agree okay so here we have one two three we have three alpha hydrogens here and here also we have one two three and here you have one and two correct so we have six and two eight we have eight alpha hydrogens here so basically what do we have we have maximum alpha hydrogens eight greater than four greater than one which means third structure is going to have most number of alpha hydrogens followed by second followed by first which means the stability is also going to follow this order so this is going to be the order of stability of these alkenes okay so three greater than two greater than one is here in option c so option c is going to be the right answer to this question so here they're asking you which of the following sigma bonds can participate in 
hyper conjugation right so basically what do we know hyper conjugation is called a no bond resonance so from here we have one very important idea that comes which is when we need to talk about the hyper conjugating structures which bond are we breaking you know like very roughly which sigma bond are we saying that participates in hyper conjugation the sigma bond between the alpha carbon and its respective hydrogen okay so look here this is the functional group this is the functional group we are concerned by which means here your alpha carbon is this i'll call this one and this i'll call this two okay so first of all this bond between carbon one and its respective hydrogen that is a bond that will participate in hyperconjugation secondly the bond between carbon two and hydrogen this is also a bond which will participate in hyperconjugation however if you look at it this bond between carbon 2 and the respective let's call this carbon 3 between carbon 2 and carbon 3 that bond is not going to break why because in the case of hyperconjugation what is essentially moving is the hydrogen right the sigma bond between the alpha carbon and the respective hydrogen is the one that is moving the one that is getting displaced the one which is causing the electronic effect of hyperconjugation okay so what did we see we saw that carbon 1 hydrogen and carbon 2 hydrogen that is nothing but 1 and 2 these two will break okay not this right not this uh not this bond that is 4 not this bond okay not these things okay cool so 1 and 2 which is your an option a is going to be the right answer to this question 